Hi, I'm Bob McMillan, and in this edition of Space Flight Review, we're going to take a look at the excitement of Space Camp, and we're also going to look back at Space Shuttle Mission 41D, the flight of the Space Shuttle Discovery. That flight occurred about 10 years ago, and on board was Mission Specialist Mike Mullane, and recently we had a chance to speak with the astronaut about what it's like to go into space. Mr. Mullane, maybe you could tell the people at home what it's, uh, what it's like during the, the launch phase of the Space Shuttle flight. A launch, launch is scary. Uh, it's very, very frightening. Uh, you're strapped into the vehicle. Uh, you don't have a lot of you don't have a sense that you have a lot of control over it, so it's it's frightening in that sense. It's not like an airplane where you feel like you have a lot of control. Uh, there's a lot of noise and vibration when the motors start. Uh, significant changes when you have booster separated. 25 miles altitude, then it gets very quiet. So you go from all this noise and vibration, and two minutes up, bang, these boosters separate, and then it's glass smooth for the next six and a half minutes that the main engines are running. Uh, about at what point during ascent is uh, do you start to feel the weightlessness? Well, you don't feel weightlessness at all during ascent. You mm -hmm. feel it only after the motors have, have stopped. At that point, you're in orbit, and, and then you're weightless. Uh, when your engines are thrusting, you feel like you're being squished into your seat. What is your probably your best uh, uh, memory of, uh, of, of a space flight that you've been on? Well, I think the first time you look out the window from a couple hundred miles up and look at the Earth is uh, a sight that will be burned in your brain forever. I mean, it's just so beautiful. I mean, you get, on this, you get in this space, spaceship, and the last time you saw the Earth, it was this uh, flat uh, uh, Florida landscape. And now the next time you see the Earth, it's from you know 200 miles up. You don't see it as a, as a globe. We're not that far away. But it's obvious uh, that it's an incredible vista, blue, mostly blue, with the oceans and white with the clouds. So it's breathtakingly beautiful. Is there is there much of a problem with adjustment once you come back down as far as adjusting from the weightless environment? It takes, it takes a while. Um, it depends on how long you were up there. My longest mission was a week, and I would say within, by the third day you're back on Earth, you're back to feeling like you never left. Uh, the first couple hours, uh, you feel your sense of balance is affected. Uh, you'll be walking, and all of a sudden you'll reach out and try to grab the wall because you feel like you're falling. Uh, so your vestibular system is somehow uh, affected. But And you wake up, the first morning you wake up, you feel like somebody lay a lead sheet on top of you. You just feel so heavy and so lethargic. But it, it goes away relatively quickly. Now, I'm sure the Russians who were up there for a year or more uh, have, a, have a much longer readaptation re problem. Sure. What, uh, what kind of advice would you give to young people these days if they're uh, maybe interested in going into aerospace, possibly being an astronaut? The thing that the common thread in all astronauts is a engineering degree or a science degree. You have to have that to apply. You don't have to be a pilot. You don't have to be in the military. But whether you're a civilian, whether you're a pilot, whether you're a non-pilot, whether you're military, whatever you know, path you come in, the one thing you have to have is a degree in science or engineering. So that's, that's the important. If you're aiming to be an astronaut, get to college, get yourself a degree in science or engineering. And if you're going to be a civilian, you better be shooting for a PhD because most of the civilians they hire are PhDs. Okay, thank you very much. All right.